hey everybody, it's Anna J. Wallner with the Author Library, and I have the amazing pleasure of welcoming Astrid VJ, USA Today best-selling author as of three hours ago. <laughs> can you, I mean, can you tell us as an indie, I mean, what, what is that like? Well, I think it's like working for 20 hour days and then getting hit by a truck. <laughs> this is just, this is amazing news. It's, it's, uh, I mean, you, you, you have been uh, working on this series for a long, long time. And to find, to get the news today that you made the New York Times, uh, the USA Today bestseller list is fantastic. So how it long- It is, it's incredible. How long has the, how long has the, the, the series been out? How long has the book been out? One week. One we week. We released it last Tuesday. Oh, so wow. one week, exactly, yeah. And that is the Enchanted Kingdoms series guys uh That's right. make sure to check it out because not only is it uh, a best-selling series uh, uh but it's also for a great cause uh and it's on sale right now and it is it is it's still on sale for a few more days the price will be going up soon Okay, <laughs> make sure, make sure to, to, to hurry up and, 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 and get your, uh, get, get, get your copy today. Uh, I'll have the link in the description and it, it benefits a fantastic, uh, cause, which is the awareness of autism. So, um, so it's, 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 it's a, it's an amazing series. I, I, I went ahead, I, I've got my own copy, by the way. Uh, and, uh, and so, so make sure to get yours as well. Um, but actually you have not only this, this series that is out right now, but you have a lot of other books out there as well. Uh, and the covers are absolutely gorgeous and eye catching. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth. And Edvard, The Sibling Tales, is the first series that you wrote. Uh, That's right, it is. <laughs> it follows two siblings in the, magic, in the magical land of Vendale who face many challenges along the way. It's almost like a coming of age tale. And this book has also won some awards. <laughs> Yes, it did. It got the Literary Classics Award for Fairy Tales, Gold Gold Award for Fairy Tales, and the Silver Award for Young Adult Fantasy in 2019. And can you tell us a little bit about the series, just kind of a broad overview? Yes, absolutely. Well, let's begin at the beginning because it starts when I read Ella Enchanted. I was 15 years old. I loved Ella Enchanted totally adored it. But I had this one disappointment with it, which was that it's a Cinderella retelling. And there are so many versions of Cinderella. And why do we only ever get Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast and Snow White? Now in the 10 years, 15 years since, it's things have changed. There are more fairy tales that are coming in, but there are still very much mainstream fairy tales. I decided to go for my favorite German fairy tale, which is Brother and Sister, hence the sibling's tale. Hansel and, and Gretel. Well, no, oh? this one is different. Ah. <laughs> this one is different. It's not known in the English speaking world. And I thought I wanted to change that. So essentially, my first book in the two part series is the backstory. It's the why did the fairy tale happen? And the second book, which is called Becoming, part two of the sibling's tale, is the one that actually starts where the fairy tale starts and goes through all the motions of the fairy tale. And I love the fact that you've, um, 
that you've taken uh, actually uh, it's it's Elizabeth and Edward because uh, my last name is actually pronounced Volner. Um, and a lot of people don't don't know that, um, but it is uh, it, it, I mispronounced it in in German because Edvard is actually Edward. So um, so yeah, just uh, to, to let you know. Well, on that note, it's actually a really interesting one because I played around with the names. I originally had it Elizabeth with a Z and Edward, normal Edward with a W. And then as I was writing and I kind of kept getting more of a European, Central European feel to my culture. And I thought, well, Elizabeth in the Germanic spelling is with an S and that's easy to do. And then I came across the Swedish version of the name Edward, which is Edward with a V. And so that's how that came about. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Okay, interesting. Uh, very interesting. Well, the the um, and then and then from there you have the Apprentice Storyteller, which is a blend of both sci-fi and fantasy, which actually helps set the stage for another series. Uh, can you give us a little background on that one as well? I mean, to blend sci-fi and fantasy, how did that, that's talent. Thank you. <laughs> well, the idea, this is, this is a hard one to answer because this is kind of my linchpin in all of my world building. So the apprentice is a character who is important not only for this series but also for the very first book I ever wrote and which I haven't published yet I'm still working on it it is an African occult series urban fantasy series so set in modern day Uganda and I, I've been trying to make it work but there are certain things that I need to go to Uganda for to figure out <laughs> So I have to do some field work in proper anthropological tradition, and I haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. So that series is on hold right now. But this is then the apprentice storyteller is essentially the future of okay. that particular series. I want that series. So that that's is why it is this blend, because it has a fantasy, because it was an urban fantasy idea with magic. And it has all the magical aspects, but it's also futuristic in that there's space travel and there's a very much Star Wars-like empire of the galaxy. But it's, again, also different in many aspects because I love Star Wars, but there was a lot of stuff that needed work there. <laughs> I love it. And the 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 Uganda series that you just described that you're working on right now, I yeah. I'm I'm absolutely waiting for that to to I will be watching for that to, oh. to come out because I I love that idea. It's so unique. You never you never see um that uh, that region really um portrayed in books. And especially in, in urban fantasy, to use that as a setting is going to be, I can't wait to see what you do with it. I, I really, I, I really am intrigued. Yeah, well, the thing is, the scene has changed a lot in the last five years with um, Tomi Adeyemi's Children of Blood and Bone that's really put Africa on the map in terms of fantasy writing. But she is Nigerian and she writes very much from a Nigerian cultural perspective. And it's wonderful. I love the fact that she uses her traditional language for the magic. It's fantastic. Yes. So definitely uh, uh, some, some field work. Do you think that, well, I guess we have to wait for a little while until travel restrictions are, exactly. uh, so we can go places again, which... Uh, yes. Hopefully, hopefully. So in the meantime, I'll be carrying on with the Apprentice Storyteller and the follow-on um, books in the Wishmaster series, and the, there's a spin-off series as well, so, which is the. I was um, going to say the, the the Word Mage's Tale is is that. Yeah. That's the spin-off. Yes. Okay. I th I thought so. Yeah. It's 
it is it is a very captivating series a sounding series as well and by the way it's available for pre-order uh now um but and and both books will be released later this year and it's yes. a companion series to the to the apprentice storyteller so and the idea there is that these are the tales that the apprentice learns from his master so they're the they're more world building in terms of the greater um universe that i've created and then they're also each their own little tale what i really love about this particular series is that it all started with a series of dreams oh. i had some really vivid dreams that were as though I'd lived them. I remembered them like I'd lived them. And I had this idea, okay, well, I can work these into short stories. I think I'm going to do that. But then I didn't want to do a collection of short stories because I'm not a big fan of that. So I wanted to do a super narrative, much like, say, A Thousand and One Nights, where you have the general story of someone going through something and then they tell tales. Right. And so that was where the apprentice storyteller was born. Oh. And the idea was to have each of the smaller tales actually in the story. Gotcha. But then I did a certification training as a transformational life coach. And I had an epiphany because I suddenly realized that every single one of those dreams actually was related to one of the, the transformational principles. And then I had to dedicate a book to each principle and to each story because you couldn't do it in a short story. Wow. So this is so the word the word mages tales is going to be several, many yes. different different it's 10 books in total. <laughs> wow. There are 10 novellas. <laughs> so they're not novels, they're novellas, they're shorter, shorter fiction. Gotcha. And one of them will be exclusively available to my newsletter subscribers. That one will be going out in about a month from now. And then there's the two that you've already mentioned that are on uh, pre-order. Yes. So make sure to go to, and I'll have uh, Ashton's website down below. Is that where we can find your newsletter to sign up for? Yes, that is right. And that's also where you can find my Amazon link to all my books. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. So, uh, and the, the first book, The Artist and His Muse, will be released at the end of next month. Um, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, working like crazy on it. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of stuff going on right now, especially with the news today, which, um, yeah. can I say again, is just absolute congratulations and amazing. Um, Thank you. Uh, but uh, can you tell us, uh, the artist and his muse, about the, the, how the series, how the series begins? Okay. Each one of the book word mages tales is a standalone. Right. So it's its own, each one is its own story and it will not be necessary for people to read all the tales in the series to understand what's going on. Gotcha. I start each one from the moment where it's mentioned in the apprentice storyteller. So you get the opening with the apprentice telling the tale from that moment where it's mentioned in the apprentice storyteller and then it shifts into the tale and what's happening with the characters in the story wow. so the artist and his muse opens in with the artist participating in a contest and now this is there is a baron in this world who who, who is a patron of the arts, but he's incredibly picky. So he only sponsors the best. And to prove yourself the best, you have to pass this challenge. And so the challenge is to paint a painting on a wall in one go. No break. 
Oh, <laughs> wow. So if it takes you two days, then you are up for two days painting this wall. Exactly. That, wow. so, and, so, and so this artist does it. But he realizes that he couldn't have achieved it if it hadn't been for a young woman who showed up, who was just looking, she was just watching him, but there was something about her that grabbed his attention. And she inspired him to add an element into his painting that just gave it the wow and made it just the most beautiful painting ever. And so that is why she's his muse. I love it. And it goes on to actually develop a relationship between the two of them. But I'm not going to give anything away. No, <laughs> please, please. Yes, I, I, I can't wait to, to, to jump into to that. I mean, like, yes. The apprentice storyteller, I feel like I need in one hand. And then in the other hand, I need the artist and his muse. And then um, in my lap, I need the second installment, which will follow shortly after, which is The Last Warrior. And, uh, and, and you're not stopping there. there there's, no. there's, there's going to be eight coming after that. So, yeah. so it's, it's, it's time to go ahead and get invested and get the apprentice storyteller and uh, go ahead and, and, and jump into that world so that the world, so that the word mages tales uh, can, can kind of blend in with that story. I, that is so amazing and such a unique concept to kind of Thank blend, you. to blend two different stories together like that uh, and ambitious but uh, be because you mentioned a thousand and one Arabian Nights, and and it is it does kind of the way that you describe it have that have that feel where where there's the overarching story and then multiple different uh, shorter shorter tales in in inside of that. So that's yes. that's that's am amazingly creative. I am uh, very in I'm very envious. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, the creativity behind that and uh so the the and not even that but you've also worked on an anthology of short stories called enchanted waters which will be out this summer <laughs> yes so uh and that one i'd like to add is actually um, also a fundraiser for the ocean charity oceana Oh. So we, we're a group of fantasy authors who write water creatures, the fantasy water creatures. And so we're, we're putting together this anthology to raise money to clean up the oceans. Oh, something that is absolutely near and dear to my heart because I love the ocean and um, I, it just, um, yeah, uh, living, getting to visit the ocean is my, my calming space. It makes yeah. me feel more, um, in tune with nature and it's, it has a natural calming effect to it. And to see some of the things that wash up on the beach and the <laughs> constant cleanup efforts that are going on um along the coast of texas i live in texas and we have a large area of mm -hmm. the gulf coast and um every time that i do get the opportunity to go to the coast i'm always amazed at how much um how much is is, is washed up on the mm -hmm. shore and so i do see cleanup efforts i've participated in cleanup efforts um uh, in, along the Texas coast. So, um, fantastic, uh, charity. Uh, and I have to get that one too, because I'm just in love with everything ocean, uh, always have been since I was a kid. I don't know. Maybe I was a mermaid, like in a future life or in, in a past life or something. I don't know. Yeah. That, that one I'd like to also add is, um, going to be illustrated by a fantastic artist. We absolutely love her work. So she's, she's doing all, all the illustrations for free as part of this charity uh, endeavor. So definitely something worth supporting. Absolutely. Two amazing 
uh, collections, guys that are that go to great causes. Uh, is the uh, I wanted to ask the Enchanted Waters is it available now for for pre order? Yes. Okay, yes, it is. So I'm definitely adding that to my list um, as well. Um, my, my Kindle is getting quite full. Um, but uh, I, I, I want to ask, I know that you've got um, a, a, a huge afternoon of celebration, well-deserved celebration coming. But before, before I let you go, I, I just, I want to ask for, for all of us out there, that uh, that that have a a dream of getting the kind of news that you got today. What advice do you have to pass on to other other authors? Right from the heart. It's the most important part. No one can get behind something you don't believe in. So you have to write what you believe in, and then just keep going. Be Dory, just keep swimming. <laughs> uh, that is, that is my motto is just keep one day at a time and yes. stay positive. It's tough. I Sometimes. think it might be important for me to share this because I think it, it will help a lot of other people who are at the beginning of the journey to see that anything is possible. So as I mentioned, I started writing in my teens. I started writing when I was 12, in fact. And throughout my teens, I wrote every spare moment that I had, I wrote novels. That, that was what I dedicated my time to. But during that time, I also saddled myself with the idea that the life of a writer is not a profession that's going to be successful. It's not worthwhile because it's not going to bring in money to survive. That was the idea I kind of got. It's like the idea that how many times did J.K. Rowling have to submit her manuscript to be able to make it? And of course, my books weren't Harry Potter. So why even bother? Kind of that I saddled myself with that idea. And I did kind of have the thought of maybe I should go into journalism. And I tested that in a, a week of internship during high school. And I had such a horrible experience at it that I said, nope, journalism is not for me. So when I studied, I went into psychology because that would get me a decent job. But I didn't want to let the writing go just yet. So I also did a degree, I did a concurrent degree with two majors, which was psychology and English literature. Wow. And as part of that course, I had to take a series of electives in first year, just to have a bunch of humanities electives. And I ended up with social anthropology, which I stuck with for three years, <laughs> and have since gone on to do a master's in, because that is actually my passion. I hated psychology. <laughs> It was, it was the worst. I just could not sit there and tell other people what was wrong with them. It just felt so fake. <laughs> and so then after completing my degree in social anthropology, I moved to Sweden with my husband and we, we started, you know, I, I got a job and we had our children. And then I was on maternity leave with my second child. And I, my mom encouraged me to take a, a course for social development, oh, sorry, um, life, life skills and um, self-development uh, called the Ultimate Success Masterclass. And that one gave me some key pointers that made me realize if I don't publish what I've already written now, I probably never will. And I will always regret it. And so that got me onto the publishing journey. Uh, so in 2019, in May, I, I published my first book and published two after that that year. Then I received my award in November. Last year, I took a long break. I spent a lot of time writing, trying to put together the finances, yes. fixing yes. book covers because my first cover designers 
royally screwed up my cover. <laughs> So I had to get somebody else to do it. And she did such a marvelous job that The Apprentice Storyteller released in December and in January it won the All Author Cover Contest. And then now in February, I released Naya's Wish together with the Enchanted Kingdoms box set and have now received the USA Today Best Selling Award. Not quite two years into my journey. It's Next week will mark two years since I made the firm decision that I would publish a book in 2019. <laughs> wow. I, so inspirational to, to hear that, that, you know, to, to hear your story and to know guys, I mean, it, it is, it is tough. I, everyone deals with self-doubt at a certain point in their life, but there is a, a point at which you just, you, you have to take that chance and put yourself out there and and you did and things happened very quickly and and organically the way that they were just supposed to to happen you know i have to 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 believe and and think that if you had never if you had never done that you know exactly exactly what if i'd allowed those thoughts to guide my life and to win Instead of allowing the dream that I've been fostering for 20 years. You were to 12. Win. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's, that was the thing that, that that course taught me was that where you put your thoughts is where the energy flows. So if you're blocking the energy towards the success that you're looking for because you're thinking negative thoughts and you're thinking that it's impossible, then that is what it will be. I love the, the quote by Henry Ford, that is, whether you be believe you can or you can't, either way, you are right. Very true. Very, very true. And, and having, having the, the ability to silence some of those negative self thoughts that you have, mm -hmm. that you're not good enough, that I, that the book is not good enough, that no one's going to read it. If that's the case, then that's the case that no one reads it. No one read, you know, my first book that I put mm -hmm. out there, but, but I had to do it. I mean, I say no one, there are a few people, but, but, you know, I had to do that to get over the fear Mm -hmm. of putting out that first that first book and then exactly and I'm still still very new in 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 the publishing you know um uh space and but but uh but but I'm still going and I'm still staying yes. positive and I won't let anybody kill that that positivity that I have and the confidence that I have in myself because no matter what guys you know you, you you've got to believe in yourself and yes and and there's also the fact that each person has their own journey to go through so yeah okay it's taken two years right and I would not say that I am successful at this point because I'm still not selling a lot of books at this point I can't make a living out of my writing yet but I know that if I continue the snowball will grow so yes. I will keep working at it and I will not give up but other people, yes, it might take longer. You might, it, it might take you longer to find your niche. You have to remember that, I mean, I've been writing for 20 years. So I, I've been practicing. I've put in what they say is the, the minimum, which is 10,000 10, hours. 10,000 hours, yes. <laughs> I've put in my 10,000 hours, so now it comes easily. But of course, if you're still in that journey of learning how to write, that's that in and of itself is a journey and a struggle and and it's hard i mean writer's block is a thing it happens you don't know what's going to go on you need to figure out the strategies that work for you to overcome the difficulties that face you in your writing which is why i also always say write from the heart because when you when you try to write for a market or you try to write because it's a trendy it it just doesn't quite work no and it's it's not going to have the effect that you're looking for you're Whereas going to right from the heart yes maybe it will take you longer to find the fans maybe it will take you longer to to find your niche but once you've got it the sky's the limit because then then you can just keep growing 
and the word of mouth will 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 really really help you and writing something that you're passionate about absolutely translates into the experience for the reader because you're passionate about it while you're writing it and it really does come through and you're so very very right a lot of people if you try and write for the market you're going to find yourself struggling at some point to to stay within the lines and I think yeah. that's what's so great about um, about being an independent or self-published author or uh, being with a small indie press is that you have the freedom to color way outside of those lines and find your niche, as Astrid said, and and really and and develop that that uh, that passion for for what moves you as an author. So. Fantastic advice. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. And, uh, and I congratulations again, because it is, is well deserved. And, and, and guys, make sure to, to before it goes off sale, like today, like right now, go <laughs> and check out Astrid's website and all of the links that I have in the description below. And make sure that, um, that you subscribe to the channel and, and so that you don't miss any great upcoming content. And I'd love to have you on again. When I'd you love to be here again. Thank you. It's been awesome. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes. No, thank you for, for, for taking me up on, on, on joining me today. It's been a, a, a wonderful chat that we've had. And uh, I think that it's going to help to inspire a lot of people in the writing community and uh, to, to keep following their dreams. And, and one day hope to, hope to be sitting here saying, hey, I just made the USA Today bestseller list. It's possible. It is possible. Yes, it takes a lot of work and you need an awesome team, a really kick-ass team with you. <laughs> but it works. It is possible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ashford, thank you again so much for coming on today and guys, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks. Bye.